So anybody that's watched my videos, early videos on medieval history will know that I've recorded a couple at a couple of local sites of interest to me. I've done one video at a Rotten Bailey Castle, which is fairly nearby, and also one at Hartford Castle. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. What I didn't do in the video was talk much about the history of the castle. And actually, instead, all I really spoke about was the outer wall. I will talk about the outer wall here as well a little bit, but also a little bit more about the the history of the castle itself. So the above image that you can see is the outer wall of Hartford Castle. It was built around 1170 to 1174 by King Henry II. And anybody familiar with that period will know that that was the beginning of a turbulent time for the king. The, the building of the wall could have been a response to the troubles that was happening with Thomas Beckett. But that was just reaching its climax and in 1170 so around the time the construction of the wall was taking place becker was murdered it's more likely that the building of the wall was ordered as henry was now beginning to have trouble with his sons henry the young king richard the lionheart and geoffrey his other son, John, wouldn't go into rebellion until later in the reign, as he was still too young at the time. But that rebellion would break Henry's heart because John was his favourite. If you look at the outer wall, you can see red brick that's been added to it so at some point it's been necessary to support the wall that Henry II built because it was obviously starting to crumble. The wall is well worth visiting in itself because it, it's there are it, it extends for quite a way actually far longer than I actually thought initially thought and so Although you can't access all of it because some of it goes into private car parks, you can actually have a little wander around Hartford Castle itself and it takes you down to some quite scenic routes. So if you're in Hartford, I would recommend going to the castle. The main building of the castle now is quite modern looking and it's not really that interesting, but around around the castle itself now there are there are things to see including a monument to the first church synod that was held in england and i'll show you an image of that on the next on the next uh, part of the video and also nearby although i don't have that much interest in this particular area of history there is a statue to the man who helped found Hartford in Connecticut in the USA and he was born very close to the castle so Hartford is a place that's well worth visiting if you're ever nearby because there are lots of little nooks and crannies and it's, it's a town that's quite got quite a lot of charm I'd, I'd say but back to the history of the castle and one of the standout events in its history was the death there of Queen Isabella of France, the infamous wife of Edward II and mother to Edward III. After she had been sidelined by Edward II in favour of first Pierce Gaveston and then the dispensers, Isabella and her supposed lover Roger Mortimer deposed the king and almost certainly had him murdered in 1327. Now there is one theory that Edward II wasn't murdered at all at Berkeley Castle, but actually escaped overseas, which is something I don't buy. But if you'd like to hear more about that theory, you can read work on Edward III by Ian Mortimer. And also Catherine Warner has plenty to say on that matter as well. <laughs> 
Edward III was crowned king in place of his father in 1327 at the age of 15, but it was Isabella and Mortimer that ruled on behalf of him for three years, but they did a very poor job, and all they did was alienate the country and fail to govern properly. And basically the only people that profited from their rule was themselves, as they gradually made themselves richer and richer. In 1330, Edward III, aged now about 18, stormed Nottingham, Cas Nottingham Castle sorry, and overthrew the rule of his mother and Mortimer, who could now be described as a tyrant. Mortimer was hanged at Tyburn and Isabella disgraced effectively for the rest of her life. She did gradually come back into the fold with Edward III, but her reputation had been damaged beyond repair, really. Her initial captivity was also in Hertfordshire, at Berkhamsted. By the time of her death, though, in 1358, she and Edward had made up enough for Edward to actually make a visit to Hertford Castle, where she was staying, and so he saw her one last time before she died. And in 1360, a couple of years after his mother had died, Edward granted the castle to his son, John of Gaunt, who would become one of the richest and most powerful men in England. So there we get a good idea of how important the castle was now becoming. The site of Hartford Castle was first developed by William the Conqueror after his Norman invasion. And actually, it had been a uh, it had been an active site since the time of Edward the Elder in the early 10th century. Within about half an hour drive <clears throat> from Hartford Castle, there are at least that I know of three major Norman fortifications, with Hartford being the biggest. And there are actually sites of other Norman uh, castles across Hertfordshire as well. So you can see that in Hertfordshire, William the First castle building programme was quite extensive. But before it, the site had become really important in the 14th century, there had been other events of historical importance at Hartford as well. In the early 13th century, it fell into the hands of another French invasion, the less, fa the less famous French invasion after the Conqueror, and this one had been led by Prince Louis of France, the son of Philip II. Louis would become Louis VIII, and he saw the site at Hartford as important enough to lay siege to it. And after a month or so, he captured it. But eventually Louis's attempts to seize the English crown petered out and he was defeated by the regent of England at the time, William Marshall. When Louis left England in 1217, Hartford Castle returned to the English monarchy. In the 14th century, Hartford was the temporary home of two captured kings, David II of Scotland and John II of France. David was eventually ransomed, but John, after he had been ransomed himself, returned to England when the French reneged on the terms of his release, and he died in London. John had returned to England voluntarily, which earned him high praise. His 
vision of chivalry had undoubtedly been shaped by his treatment by Edward the Black Prince, who had captured him at Poitiers in 1356. Such was the Black Prince's nobility that John had been left massively impressed with him. And so, even though he could have remained in France after his initial release, he decided to return as prisoner, perhaps in a way of showing his respect to the Black Prince in particular, and to return some of the uh, the good treatment he had received from the English Prince. Later in the 14th century, Richard II took possession of Hertford Castle after John of Gaunt had died in 1399. Richard should not have taken possession of Hertford Castle as it should have passed on to the hands of Henry Bolingbroke. But Richard had sent Bolingbroke into exile and had taken all of Gaunt's possessions which should have passed on to his son Henry and Richard took them for himself and this eventually would be the downfall of Richard when Henry returned to England and deposed him. Along with taking the crown Henry took his rightful possessions at Hartford Castle, the Duchy of Lancaster and many other of his possessions that were rightfully his and he had in his eyes, he had restored himself to his rightful position after Richard had completely disenfranchised him. Henry the Fourth, as he now was, took the castle and he seems to have been reasonably fond of it. He is known to have spent Christmases at the castle. It's safe to say, in its heyday, Hartford Castle was a site of reasonable luxury. It housed two foreign kings, a disgraced queen, and it also housed Edward III at one point, Henry IV. So, that gives you a good idea of why this castle is particularly important and it's worth talking about. Its proximity to London would have been one of its main attractions for the monarchy. It had seen off a siege from a French invader. temporarily falling into its hands before it returned to the English monarchy and eventually it was sadly demolished in the 17th century so what we see now is a very modern construction but as I've mentioned the walls and the outer area of the castle is worth, still well worth visiting because you do get a idea of the scale of the actual castle. Locally there are other areas of interest nearby to Hartford Castle as I mentioned the three the other three um, the other two sorry the other two castles that William the Conqueror built including Waitmore Castle and a, another modern Bailey Castle at Stansted Mount Fitcher in nearby Essex. And also, in a little village called Much Haddam, was the birthplace of Edmund Tudor, husband of Margaret Beaufort and father to Henry VII. So, Hertfordshire is a county, and Essex is a county, or are counties, that are well worth visiting if you just dig a little bit deeper for history. Hartford Castle is a, a site of genuine interest and is worth, well worth a visit. And as I mentioned earlier, and I'll just talk about it again, 
there was also a monument marking the first church synod held in England by but the Archbishop of Canterbury Theodore in the early 7th century there is remarkable history in the local area and it's a very scenic town so I would absolutely recommend visiting Hartford it's a town I like and I'm there fairly often and I hope this will just engage people a little bit it's quite an informal video it's not a video that I've uh, planned a great deal I just wanted to talk a little bit about my experiences there and I hope people have found this informative and what I intend to do over time is actually visit other places in Hertfordshire for instance I want to go to St Albans although that's quite difficult to get to actually by transport and Berkhamsted which I mentioned earlier in the video where Isabella was held temporarily my next port of call will be to visit probably Saffron Warden which is in Essex which is about 40 40 minutes or so away I believe as there is a castle there which I wasn't aware of until recently so there are so I'm going to do a few more of these types of informal videos about local history and I hope people find them engaging